Hi, I'm John Barron, and in this video I'll be presenting MIPNERF, a multiscale representation for anti-aliasing neural radiance fields. First, let's review NERF. NERF stands for Neural Radiance Fields, and it's a very simple and powerful way to use neural networks to do novel view synthesis. The basic idea is that you trace rays through each input image, you sample points along those rays, you feed those sampled coordinates to a neural network that predicts a color and a density for each sample, and then you do alpha compositing along the ray to render a pixel. Just doing this a few billion times while minimizing a loss against the input images will give you a network whose weights encode the shape and color of the scene, and that lets you render new views from angles you didn't see during training. The goal of this work is to address a fundamental flaw that NERF has in terms of aliasing and how it deals with scale. Let's see what that problem is. Here's a short test set sequence from one of the scenes in the Blender dataset that NERF used. And here's what a rendering from NERF looks like at a full resolution. It does a great job, and so the SSIM score shown here is close to 1, as we'd expect. But here's what happens if you render that NERF from further away or at a different resolution. Instead of a nice photorealistic reproduction of the ground truth, you start to get a lot of these jaggies, and the SSIM drops a lot. You can try to train NERF on multi-resolution data, but that doesn't fix this problem. Performance improves a little at low resolution, but gets worse at the high resolution, which isn't ideal. And here's our model, which we're calling MIPNERF, trained on the same data, and you can see that it's able to produce high-resolution renderings across multiple scales, instead of just at a single scale like we saw in NERF. Additionally, MIPNERF's performance doesn't degrade when it's trained on multi-scale data, unlike NERF. To understand why this is happening, it's helpful to review some image processing basics. Let's say you've got an image, like this one here, and you want to downsample it. One way to do this is just basic resampling, where we just grab 16 rows and 16 columns from the image. This is a really bad way to do downsampling because you get these awful aliasing artifacts, which people in the graphics community usually call jaggies. The fix for this is to filter your image before you sample. Here I'm just applying a Gaussian blur and then doing the same sampling I did before. And you can see that because the image was properly filtered before sampling, you get a reasonable looking downsampled result. But if you want to generate a lot of different resampled images at different sizes, this procedure can be very expensive. That's because for each new image size you want to generate, you need to blur the image again, and this really adds up. People in the graphics community saw this problem and came up with a very effective pre-filtering strategy for this, where you just pre-compute different copies of the image at different scales. This sort of representation is usually called a MIP map or an image pyramid. Now, if you've pre-computed a pre-filtered representation of the image like this, then you can just do a trilinear interpolation into the MIP map at the right location and the right scale to quickly get a properly downsampled image. This trick is ubiquitous and is used all the time in real-time graphics engines for things like texture mapping, where you need to be able to resample quickly. In the original NERF paper, most of the main results were on these scenes of objects floating in space with a hemisphere of cameras around each object pointing inward which you can see visualized as camera frustums here. Part of why NERF performs well on this task is that all of the cameras are placed at the same distance from the object. What this means is that NERF can do view synthesis without ever having to reason about scale or aliasing. But if you start to add in new cameras that are pulled away from the object, NERF starts to break down because it's a single scale model trying to solve a multi-scale problem, as we saw on the Lego truck results earlier. Our goal with MIPNERF was to fix NERF such that it doesn't produce aliased renderings, the same way that MIP maps fix imagery sampling, hence the name. Of course, actual MIP mapping doesn't work for this problem because images and neural networks are very different things. So to fix this aliasing issue, we had to dig into the details of how NERF works. Now let's look at exactly why NERF is aliased. NERF works by casting a ray through each pixel in an image and then point sampling coordinates along each of those rays. NERF renders a whole image by just rendering each single pixel individually, so we can just think about how one pixel is rendered. In NERF, each coordinate along each ray has to be transformed with what's called a positional encoding before being passed to the network, and we're going to denote that positional encoding function with this gamma function here. So that was NERF, and this is MIPNERF. The first big difference is that instead of casting a ray through each pixel, we're going to cast a cone. Here the radius of the cone is determined by the size of the pixel on the image plane, so the cone is modeling the whole volume of space that is visible by the pixel. This means that when we render this cone, we'll be averaging out all of the content within that visible volume, instead of just rendering whatever intersects with the infinitely narrow ray that was cast by NERF. Now instead of just sampling single points along each ray, we're going to slice up this cone into conical frustums. 
Here we're isolating one of those conical frustums by itself. Because conical frustums are difficult to manipulate analytically, we fit a multivariate Gaussian to the frustum, and this has a closed form solution. Then, instead of positional encoding a single coordinate along the ray, we compute the expected positional encoding with respect to the Gaussian that we've constructed. Because of some nice properties of sinusoids and Gaussians, this also has a simple closed form that can be computed quickly. We're going to refer to these features as integrated positional encodings. Here's what the positional encoding used by NERF looks like. We've got a single 1D coordinate X shown on the left there, and we're projecting it onto a set of sinusoids whose frequencies are all powers of two from each other. Now here's what our integrated positional encoding looks like, where we're modeling a Gaussian parameterized by a mean and a standard deviation. You can see that when the Gaussian gets wide, the encodings at higher frequencies get shrunk towards zero, and when the Gaussian gets narrow, those high frequencies reappear. So by using these features, MIPNERF is able to reason about the scale of its inputs by just looking at the scale of these encodings, and this lets the model understand the difference between small volumes and large volumes. Now let's look at some quantitative results. Here we're plotting accuracy on the y-axis, where lower error is better, and on the x-axis we're plotting how long it takes to render a million pixels, where lower is also better. We've plotted the performance of the improved version of NERF that we've been evaluating against in this video. And now here is the performance of a very strong baseline that tries to fix aliasing using a different approach than pre-filtering. This is a super-sampled NERF, where we've trained a NERF on only single-scale data, and we super-sample it by casting multiple rays per pixel. So to render a low-resolution image, we need to render a full-resolution image and then manually downsample that rendering. Super-sampling is a very effective way to reduce aliasing, but it's also very slow, as you can see from the runtime. And here's MIPNERF. You can see that it has a little less than half of the error of this improved NERF baseline, and is also a little bit faster. And you can see that it's about 22 times faster than brute force supersampling, and roughly as accurate. Also, MIPNERF is about 7% faster to the train than the NERF, and because we only learn a single multiscale model, MIPNERF has half as many parameters as NERF. Now here are some results on this multiscale Blender dataset that we've been using, where NERF is on the left, and MIPNERF is on the right. You can see that when the camera zooms out, NERF tends to have a lot of jaggies and aliasing artifacts, and when the camera zooms in, NERF tends to be oversmoothed and blurry. In contrast, MIPNERF is able to produce photorealistic renderings across all scales. Thanks for your attention.